Songwriting has never been a choice for me. I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. When I was little, I was riding my bike around the neighborhood and I rode past a car with the window open and I heard the carpenters singing close to you. And I thought, it's the most beautiful song I had ever heard and I just wanted to hear it again. My parents bought me a piano when I was about 10 and I'd sit at it and words would come, melodies would come, but I didn't actually realize what I was doing was writing songs. It was a way to express myself and I felt like I could express myself better with words and melody than I could with the English language. Sitting at that piano was my happy place, even when I was miserable, especially when I was miserable. When I got out of college, I came to New York and my friend took me down to Bleecker Street and introduced me to The Bitter End and Kenny's Castaways. My thought was, how on earth did it take me so long to find this? And I don't wanna leave. All I wanted to do was play wherever they'd let me play for free. I didn't care. And that's what I did. And I waited a lot of tables uh, waiting for my first cut. I never thought about how it's going to happen or if it was going to happen. I just really believed that it would and I put one foot in front of the other. My first cut was with, that's a song being recorded, was with Taylor Dane in 1986. It was called Carry Your Heart. That album sold three million copies and I thought this is gonna be cake. If every album sells that many copies, it's gonna be great. Billboard reviewed the album and named the song as one of the ones to watch. And I thought, oh my God, this is what I've waited for. I'm gonna have a huge hit and this is gonna be great. And the song was never even released as a single. My first US hit was Bitch and that came out 11 years after my first cut. So it was a long road. I met Meredith Brooks at the Mint. I went to see her play and I thought, she's great. I loved her. I thought, she just needs that song. I mean, I didn't know what song it was or if I could write it. I just really felt like with the right song, she could do it. A little while after that, I was coming back from a session one night. I was in my car, I was feeling kind of stressed out, kind of PMS-y, kind of bitchy, and I had this thought. And my thought was, I can be such a bitch, I'm going home to this great guy who loves me just the way I am, never asks me to change, and then it hit me. This could be a really great idea, and I know who I can write it with. So in the morning, I called Meredith. She came over. She totally got it, because she was that bitch too. And the great thing about writing it with her is that it wasn't just a song about her, and it wasn't just a song about me. It was both of us telling the truth about something we both personally felt. Also, we were in a little room. She had a guitar on her lap. There was no track. There was no beat. There was no recording equipment. It was line, 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 until the song was done. And What a Girl Wants happened the same way. It was Guy and I in a little cubicle with a keyboard and that's all we needed. A friend of mine recently called me a serial songwriter. He said, you wake up every day and do the same thing, year after year. And he was right. I'm a serial songwriter. And I loved the way it sounded. It had a great ring to it, and I ran with the ball with his blessing. So recently, I started writing about writing. And I realized what I was doing was I was writing a book. And I decided to call the book Confessions of a Serial Songwriter. I talk about my adventures and misadventures 
in songwriting. I talk about what I call my handful of hits and the hundreds of songs I've written that have never seen the light of day. And I get into how the business has changed over the last 10 years, and that's really affected a lot of people's game. It's scary, this uncharted territory and jumping into the unknown, but it's also exciting. And I think waking up every day knowing what's going to happen is scarier. And every morning I'm waking up ready and early and eager and so excited. I just hope it works out. <laughs>